All that was 12 months ago. And now we've got to find out what effect the oil and the new detergent they use to disperse the oil has had on seashore life. On Belf, huh? Oh, well, Belf is the nearest island and the one worst hit at the time. Uh, we've changed the program three times. And the answer's still the same? Still the same. The results would look very ugly on a graph. Put them on a graph, then. Then what? Perhaps too much can frighten the petrol companies into stopping using lead additives. Look, you'll need more than that. So we want samples of uh, seaweed, gastropods, bivalves, crustacea, a few gulls' eggs if you can get them without killing yourself. But I don't suppose they were really affected. Anyway, don't stay away too long. Uh, supposing I like it, can't I have a few days' rest? <laughs> no. Oh, I shouldn't need to be there more than a day. I... OK, well, have a good trip. Thanks. See you. So you're a both? That's right. Uh... You'll find them in a strange, close lot on Bow. How often do you call? Oh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Weather permitting. Could you make an extra call and pick me up tomorrow? Getting out quick, eh? No, no, but I should be finished by tomorrow afternoon. Here we are. You can see the village.
Morning, Mr. Strager. Morning, Alex. Tom's still poorly, then? Oh, he'll soon be up and about. Here's your mail. Here. Morning. Oh, this is Doctor, um... Sure. Doctor? Come all the way from London. That's a lot. You staying for a drink, then? No, no, I'd best get back. I'll see you tomorrow, then, eh? No three be all right? Fine, fine. All right, boy, we can get back there. It's all right. I'll give you a hand. This it? I'll uh, just dump this inside, shall I? No. It's all right. I'll take it now. <coughs> I'm looking for somewhere to stay for the night. We don't cater for visitors. Well, there must be somewhere. No. We're just little cottages, see? Rectory's only big house here. All right, I'll ask at the rectory then. Where's that? Round the corner on the left. You can't miss it. Thank you. What are you doing? Oh, I didn't think anyone was in. What do you want? Well, I've just arrived on the island. I want somewhere to stay for the night. Why come here? This is not a lodging house. No, I was told I could find accommodation. Told? Who are you, anyway? My name's Shaw, Dr. Shaw. I can't help you. I can't help you. Well, just a minute. I can't help you. do for you, sir. Are you the policeman? That's me. My name's Shaw. I've just arrived and I'm having difficulty finding somewhere to sleep. Oh? Well, I imagine you would have. Just for the one night. I'll be off again tomorrow. You got business here? Well, I don't see what it's got to do with you, but yes, I have, yes. Well, you could ask Miss Johnson up at the body. Up the hill on the lane leading into the woods. Thank you. Just the one night, is it? Just the one night, yes. Come in. Your coffee, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Did you enjoy your supper? Delicious, thank you. Oh, are you going to join me for a cup? Oh, no. That's for Miss Brown, my other guest.
this place called the Bothy, do you suppose? It's a common word. It's used in many dialects. It means hut or cottage and comes from the same root as the word booth, which is the North Boa, and from the Middle English, bothe, meaning to dwell. <laughs> I take it you're the schoolmistress. What's your name? Victoria Brown. It seemed boorish to sit under the same roof and not to introduce ourselves, isn't it? It's been rather one-sided so far. My name's Del Shaw. Oh, come in. Thank you. Yeah, nice fire. Thank you. Nice room. Thank you. Is the, is the food always so awful in this island? Yes, I think so. You'll get used to it. You're not an islander, are you? No, I'm a foreigner. How long have you been here? Two years. How did you find them when you first came here? Was it difficult at first? Yes, they were. They're just beginning to accept me now. I think it would take longer with me. They seem an odd lot. I mean, don't they? Why have you come here? To study the effects on seashore life of that tanker sinking here last year. Oh, you're a scientist. That's right. I work for Doom Watch. The pollution people? Uh, it's anti-pollution, I hope. How long are you going to stay here? Everybody asks me that. Just seem polite to ask. Not the way they ask it. Hey, look at this. No, no, I don't want to be put away. Are they just going for a walk? And this time of the night? You must be joking. Yeah, something strange. They seem to be forcing the old man along. Oh. Well, maybe he doesn't like walking. Do you know who they were? No, I don't. It was too dark, and I couldn't see. Coming in here. All right, just leave him be. Afternoon. 
Uh -huh. Can I get a drink here? Just give Mrs. Straker a shout. Betty! I'll get you a drink. No, no, Mike. Yes? Yes, I think I'd like a beer, please. Another couple over here, too, please, Betty. I'll get a nice head. Oh, come on, George. Let me get it. I know how things be with you at the moment. What do you mean? Well, I didn't mean that. OK, thanks. You buy me a drink. What did you mean saying that? Easy now, I Mr. Hurst. So big! Kill you. You'll be lucky. Jump him. You pig! Get that bloody house out of here! That's enough of that! Get out! Get out, George! We know what you're here for. Come back when you've got control of yourself. It's Dell. How are you? Fine, fine, thank you. <clears throat> I put the specimens on the ferry, and you should get them first thing in the morning. What do you mean? Where are you? It's still on Belf. Why? Uh, well, I haven't got enough stuff yet. I need some more gull's eggs. Gull's eggs? But I tell you they're not likely to be affected anyway. Yes, I agree. We can't have too many of them. We need a good selection of eggs, I think. Dell, what are you talking about? I said that if... Uh, quite, quite. So I'll just stay on here for a few days more, OK? Listen to me. What? I said I'm that... sorry, this line's gone very bad. I'd better ring off now. Bye, bye, goodbye. It's strange that whenever I say something to Dr Shaw that he doesn't want to hear, Telephone always breaks down. that doctor says he'll stay a few days what for collecting girls eggs he says find out what he's really after i'll try does your bucket need emptying no Pepper. what my eyes are gone It's the shutters. It's dark in here. Oh, I can't get them to focus. Oh, God. What can we do? I don't know. Tom, <laughs> you won't try and get out again, will you? I'm trying not to, Betty.
like that, you know, round here. I'm sorry? We don't like that, taking people's likeness. I didn't know that. I'll ask next time. Mind you do. We don't like that sort of carry-on at all, as a matter of fact. Okay. What can I do for you, Dr. Shaw? Constable, I think you'd better come with me. Watch up. Oh, you know the, the wood near the bothy? Uh, well, there's a body there. Buried. Whose body? I don't know. It's a young girl or a child. I'm not sure. Well, hang on. Right. Let's go. Uncovered. Well, there's nothing here. I told you someone's been here. Look, you can see for yourself the ground's newly turned over. Well, we might as well make sure now we've come all the way up here. Ah, there's nothing there, but get it. Just what are you playing at, Dr. Shaw? Can I come in? 
come in. No, oh, Dr. Shaw. Yes, come in. Would you mind calling me Dell? I need a friend. I thought you'd left. Couldn't tear myself away. I make one feel so welcome here. I'm sorry if I sound so bitter. How are you? Hmm? Why do you need a friend? I need someone to tell me what's going on in this island. <laughs> Not much. We don't get much excitement on Balfe, you know. Uh, you could fool me. Do you know that whenever I leave the confines of this village, someone follows me? Follows you? With a gun. <laughs> I think you must be imagining things. That's what Constable Hartwell told me when we didn't find the body. What body? I found a body buried in the woods. But when I went back with Hartwell, it was gone. A child's body. He didn't believe me. He didn't seem much concerned. Dr. Shaw, what are you trying to imply? Imply? What do you think? I hope that as an outsider, you might be able to help me. As an outsider who has to live here and keep their trust, I, more than anyone, have to respect the islanders' wishes. Wishing? What, what the hell are these wishes? This island has enough trouble of its own without you coming here and stirring up more. What troubles? Just leave them alone, Dr. Shaw. That's all they want, to be left alone. I don't think I can do that, you know. No, Mrs. Traker, no and no. Something has got to be done. Do you think I don't suffer too? Oh, I know, but... Do you think I'm not with you in your agony? It isn't that. Every day, Mrs. Traker, every day I'm faced with it in my own house. Just as you are. But there are so many of us. So many of us, exactly. So many of us bound together by suffering. I know. I know. Oh, Reverend, what are we going to do? We have to be strong. Strong. The word is all we have. But shouldn't we call a doctor? No doctors. What harm could a doctor do? And what good? What do we achieve by thwarting the will of the Almighty? We are puny. We are as nothing before him, Mrs. Traker. Never forget that. I know. I know. I, I don't. But with a doctor here on the island? We must be on our guard even more. But maybe we should tell him. Maybe that's part of God's plan, sending him here. You think he moves in such trivial, mundane ways? You're a good woman, Mrs. Straker, but besides, think of the unhappiness any such action would cause. Think of the worries and your husband. Mrs. Straker! Oh, Dr. Shaw. I just wanted to use the phone, if that's all right. The vicar's using it at the moment. It's all, all finished. A good day, Miss, Mrs. Straker. He seems very much part of the community here. Yes. How long has he been here? Yes, since the war. Yes, I suppose if someone spends a long time in a small community, they get a bit set in their ways, don't they? His ways are our ways, Dr. Shaw. Of course, of course, I'm sure he ministers to your spiritual needs excellently. How about your more physical needs? How do you mean? Where's the nearest hospital, on the mainland? <sighs> oh, well. We're a healthy lot on Balf. Ah, sure. What, what happens if Excuse someone me, falls... Excuse me, Dr. Shaw. I have work to do. from the North Shore. Oh, no. 
Well, Dr. Crisp. Yes? John and I have been working on those samples Dale sent up from Belf. Completely new to me. Any sign of damage from the oil or detergent? No, just the opposite. Everything seems a sight too healthy. And that's bad? I don't know about good or bad. It's peculiar. It's the plankton count in the seawater that's startling. We did a count of the phytoplankton. That's the plant. Over 8% up on average. That's peculiar. Go on. Well, if we averaged out the density of the plankton in the seawater he sent in, it works out at something like three tons to the acre. Well, that's a lot, isn't it? Well, in a year, in a good one, you might get five tons to the acre produced. To get three tons to the acre in such a short time, well, it's too much. What about the animal plankton? Well, that's odd, too, but in a different way. There's not much of it, but all the species are a bit oversized. Now get on to Dell, tell him the results, and get him to send up some fish from around the island.
Dr. Shaw, are you all right? Are you all right? Ah, uh, hello, Victoria. How you didn't kill yourself, I don't know. I uh, kill myself? Yes, you were found lying by the beach. Lying on the beach? Yes. What were you doing there? Can you remember? Yes. I, I think you bar. should lie still. Like hell I will. Who found me anyway? Dick now did he? Um, he had some lobster pots set by the point. Oh, and Mrs. Straker had a telephone message for you. It was something about fish. <sighs> Does it make any sense to you? Mm. It's beginning to. Mad, there was someone in here last night who attacked me. Hey. Look. Beggar probably left them. You got a lot of beggars in this island? No. Victoria. Listen, will you help me or won't you? I can't do anything that will harm the islanders. Now, why should I want to harm the islanders? I don't know. You might not want to, but I don't know what you want to do. Well, first, I want information. Now, there's something wrong on the island, isn't there? Yes. Yes, I think there is. Well, what is it? I don't know. That's the truth. I don't know. Well, some of the people have... Well, they've disappeared. You mean they're dead? No. They just stay in their houses. And the men, they've started fighting with each other. Yes, I saw one in the pub yesterday. It's very difficult to understand what it is. There's just a general air of secretiveness about them. You see, I'm in a very difficult position. I do want to help them, but I don't want to intrude. Will you help me if it doesn't intrude? Yes. Yes, of course I will. What do you need? I need to catch some fish. Fish? <laughs> I don't understand. I'm showing the club. Is there a fisherman on the island who would help us? <laughs> no. No, but I have a friend on the mainland, Bob Gillett. He will. Bob, I think we've got enough now, thank you. Oh, that's okay with me. Is this young halibut or what? No, it's turbot, isn't it, Bob? That's right, turbot. <laughs> they never grow to that size. Well, they do round here. Oh, yes, the fish round here are marvellous. Big? 
Oh, enormous. You wouldn't see them like that in London. They're not sent to market then, no? No, they're just sold locally. On Balfe, mainly. What's this? Castle Rock. Prohibited area. Oh, why? Who knows? They don't tell you, do they? Can we get a bit closer? Sure. What happened here? This isn't where the tanker was sunk. No. No, that was the other side of the island. No, this has been a prohibited area for eight or nine years now. Really? this time. Mm -hmm. I have admitted, after much arguing, that the Royal Navy used the Castle Rock area as a dumping ground up till six years ago. Dumping what? Oh, that they wouldn't say. Interest of national security. Not in the public interest of the present time. Not the policy of this Listen, department. Listen, they're playing our tune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's in the fish? Yeah, have a look at this. Hmm? Four parts per million of what? Well, it's a protein of sorts. It's almost like a pituitary growth hormone, but it's not. The molecules have been mucked about. How the hell could pituitary growth hormone get into fish? Yes, oh, I think you better ask the Navy that. Yes. Dr. Shaw, sir. Ah, oh, Dr. Shaw. I've been told that I should see you, but not why. For the life of me, I can't see how I can help you doomsday people. Let me explain, sir. We've come across some chemically contaminated fish, and we've got a fairly strong idea that they come from a prohibited zone in your area. It's a place called Castle Rock on Balfe. Castle Rock? Well, let's see now. That's near Wimborough, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Castle Rock. But people can't fish there. It's a prohibited area. The place is perfectly well marked with warning boys. The fish might feed there and still be caught outside the prohibited area. I just want to find out, sir, exactly what is down there. Oh, all right. Well, sit down. Taverner, will you bring the file? Is that really necessary, sir? What do you mean? <clears throat> I understand from our file that you were in charge of the inter-service ordnance team in the area at the time, and you were responsible for the dumping yourself. I don't know that I care for your imputation, Doctor. I'll uh, just get the file, sir. All right. Sir Geoffrey, I'm not concerned with past history. I'm only concerned with the effects of this dump on the people of Balfe and on the fish that feed in the area. All right, but you're on the wrong track. Nothing even remotely dangerous was dumped off Castle Rock. Then why is fishing prohibited there? Not my decision, really. But in any case, what chemical did you find in the fish? It appears to be a hormone similar to pituitary growth hormone. Now I know that you're on the wrong track, unless you can make pituitary whatnot out of mildly radioactive waste. Only radioactive waste? That's all. Only radioactive waste. That's all. I've been through that fire with a fine tooth comb. It's all above board. It says here, these canisters are corrosion proof for 150 years. Yes, I'm always inclined to mistrust that sort of claim. I'm ready if you... How much of the fish extract did you give? Well, these two are litter mates. The one on the left had nothing. And the other one had 100 milligrams of the extract intramuscularly exactly 70 minutes ago. Poor little sod. I wouldn't if I were you. Uh, 
Uh, just a hundred milligrams. <laughs> How long will it last? I'll give it a sedative in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> This dog reminds me of the dog that attacked me in the woods. It's the same violence. Yes, go on. I wonder if this could explain the odd atmosphere in that island. The outbreaks of violence. Hey, what yeah. happens when you feed people large doses of pituitary hormone? By mouth, nothing. The stomach can't absorb it. You'd have to inject it. Yeah, but this isn't just ordinary pituitary hormone. The molecules have been mucked around, remember? But the sort of thing we've just seen, you don't get from any hormone. Yeah, but you see, maybe the molecules have been rearranged to make it digestible. And it's had the side effect. Yes. Yeah. See what you mean? Well, if adults did somehow absorb pituitary growth hormone, then you would eventually get acromegaly. Exactly. I didn't get the connection. I mean, how can you get an epidemic of acromegaly? Acromegaly is only caused by the overfunctioning of the pituitary gland. So you can't. Unless the hormone is introduced from outside. But the people on Balf could have it. That strange look I told you about. The prognathous jaw, the overhanging brows. And in its last stages, like the poor bastard who attacked me. Acromegaly. Yeah. And which I took to be just some form of family likeness, you know, centuries of inbreeding. And we must remember there's no doctor resident on the island who might detect acromegaly. But there isn't any hormone, for God's sake. All there is is radioactive waste. That's something we've got to be sure about. John, can you go down and get pictures of the dump? All right, if you can get an underwater camera. Right. You and Dell get back to Belf and get those pictures. I'll get a chopper to take us down, right? Okay. I'm going to get on to the minister. Well, there it is. Castle Rock. Make sure you photograph everything. Well, here we go, huh? I just hope this isn't a minefield, that's all. No sense of adventure. That's your trouble, Bob.
this the one? Thank you. Ah, Dell, how are you? How did he go? Couldn't be better. And John didn't drown himself. No such luck. <laughs> well, where to next? Our old friend the Admiral, I think, don't you? I can't wait. Any luck pinning down exactly what's in those fish? We can't get enough out of them for proper analysis. Could the Navy be dumping vast quantities of hormone off Castle Rock? What for? I can't think what the Navy would want with futurity growth hormones in the first place. Right. Probably our trip to Portsmouth will provide the answer. Oh, I certainly hope so. Anyway, the Admiral was mildly upset by what he described as your innuendos. <laughs> Only mildly. I must be losing my grip, I think. So I thought I'd better come along this time to referee the encounter. You may well be needed. The Admiral's going to have some explaining to do. I hear that I'm mildly unpopular with you, sir. I thought your manner left something to be desired the last time we met, yes. It always lets me down, I'm afraid, but you see, it's sometimes justified. What are these? Pictures of your underwater dump off Belf. Castle Rock. Castle Rock is a prohibited area. Who took these? A friend of mine, sir, I'm afraid. He was underwater, so he didn't see the signs. Yes, these are they. These are ours. And these? What's that? That's what I hope you'll be able to tell us. It's certainly not radioactive waste. You can see better on, on this one. Well, these are nothing to do with the Navy. Well, how do you account for their presence? There's hundreds of the things down there. They must have been dumped after our operation. They're quite unauthorized. What's in them? That's what we've got to find out. There's a number on this canister. Do you think this could be checked somehow? We hope so, sir. you have to do on the island? To try and find out how many people are affected is the first. And the second is even more difficult. You've got to explain to these people what's been happening to them and then try to restore their morale. That's problematical until we know exactly what we're going to do to be able to help them. Do the best you can. Don't forget, you're all they've got at present. See you, Vicar. Oh? Yes, I wonder if you could help me. In what way? Well, I want to get the islanders together for a meeting. All the islanders. I thought the church would be a convenient and appropriate place. Indeed, I hope that you will talk to them yourself. Talk? About what? Well, to put it bluntly, there are a lot of people on this island suffering from a disease called acromegaly. A disease? Yes, it's a disease caused by exposure to a hormone. I doubt that, Doctor. What do you mean? The islanders here, you know, have lived a closed life for centuries. Life of inbreeding and immorality. Yes, yes, that first crossed my mind, but we now have definite proof of this disease. Perhaps you would enlighten me, Doctor. How is this disease contracted? We think it's probably caused by eating fish contaminated by the oh. hormone. I see. And how do you account for the fact that the disease is so selective? Striking one person and not his neighbor, one man and not his brother. Probably because one man eats more fish than another. That explanation satisfies you, does it? Yes, it's the only reasonable one. Ah, the voice of science. I'm afraid we have nothing more to say to each other. Good day, Doctor. I almost wish you were right, you know.
Well? You really put the cat among the pigeons this time. What's happening? Well, after the request for information you sent out, everybody's been making spot checks on their fish and found it packed full of the stuff. And these are where the reports have come from? Yeah. Well, apparently the French have protested to the British government. Oh, that's standard. And the minister's been trying to reach you all day. John spoke to him. And? There should be no right to divulge such information to a foreign power. What an opportunist the man is. I didn't divulge anything anyway. I merely asked for information. Now, the good news is we've traced the index marking on the canisters. And they come from Doran Chemicals. Doran? Uh, Doran Chemicals Limited, uh, Chairman Sir Henry Leighton. Trimethylamine. Your well-educated nose, Dr. Rich. Well, I'll just get Sir Henry for you. Sir Henry, there's a Dr. Ridge from Doomwatch to see you. Well, 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 Dr. Ridge. Good morning. Good morning. How's my old friend Quist? I'm sorry, I didn't know you knew each other. Oh, I expect friend is too strong a word. We were at Oxford together. Mad buggery was like all mathematicians. Well, what can I do for you? Well, uh, I'm not in trouble with you fellas, I trust. No, I don't think so. Well, thank heavens for that. The amount we spend on anti-pollution procedures... Just making some general inquiries into hormone production. I know you make a lot of them. Oh, yes, any amount. Thyroxin, adrenaline, estrogens, progesterone. What about pituitary growth hormone? As you can see, we've always geared ourselves to bulk production. We leave it to the small specialist firms to turn out the stuff that can only be produced a milligram at a time. We'd heard rumours that you'd found a way of producing it in very large quantities indeed. Oh, you should never listen to rumours, Dr. Ridge. I never do. Make it a rule. Don't I, David? Absolutely, Sir Henry. Well, let's go inside. You'll take a look at these. What are these? They're your canisters, Sir Henry. Is this ours, David? Our serial numbers have been traced to you. <laughs> oh, put not your trust in serial numbers, Dr. Ridge. Look, check on these canisters, will you, David? There's obviously been a cock-up somewhere. Um, come and have a look at the model. Now, look, Sir Henry. Can we stop playing games? Oh, no, These canisters are yours. They've been dumped in the sea, and something very like pituitary growth hormone is escaping from them. That shouldn't do much harm. Be neutralized with the seawater in a couple of hours. Old Mother Nature has a way of dealing with these things, Dr. Rich. That's what you, you doom and disaster fellas ought to realize. Yeah, unfortunately, Old Mother Nature's been nobbled in this case, as you well know. This stuff's been specially prepared, probably to be taken orally. The local fish are crammed full of it. Now, why should anyone do that? I can think of a number of reasons. Livestock feed additive is the first thing that springs to mind. <laughs> oh, you're too cute for us, Dr. Ridge. You really are. Yes, indeed, we did experiment with and for a time produce a pituitary growth hormone for the very purpose you describe, livestock feed additive. And? In small quantities, we could do it. It was very exciting. Added to the feed of bullocks, it increased their growth rate by 30% in their first year of life. Good God. Quite. Ah, David. Well, you can speak freely. I'm quite sure Dr. Ridge isn't one of these uh, <laughs> industrial spies that we read so much about. Well, sir, the canisters were RPGH. Mm. And who dumped it? Our usual people? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, as it was an important operation, we put it out to tender. And you gave the job to the lowest bidder? They were a reputable firm. Until they were found out. They gave you a low bid because they were going to dump it in their own backyard. What went wrong with the stuff? We don't really know. But for some reason, whenever we tried to produce it in bulk, the molecular structure broke up. It was still ingestible, but after a period of months, the animals were in a pitiable state. Quite uncontrollable. It seemed to produce in them a kind of Kind of frenzy. Mother! Uh. Ah! Ah! 
Certainly an attempt at pituitary growth hormones, we know that much. But is there any way we can neutralize it? In the sea, preferably? We can't tell that until we can get hold of some of the stuff. So? We have their original formula, but they could never work out what it was that always went wrong. So can't they give us some of the stuff itself? No. They just dropped it like a hot brick. They've got none of it left. The only hope is that this disposal firm, Keston, will have some. If they have, Stop them dumping it and commandeer some for us. They're on the mainland, just opposite Balfe, at Wimbra. Oh, by God, they didn't put themselves out with this dumping, did they, eh? Exactly. OK, OK, I'll get down. If they've got any of the hormone left, I'll get it down to you, right? Call me. All right, bye. Good morning, Vicar. Dr. Shaw, I need your help. Yes, Vicar, I needed yours yesterday. What is it? I know. I'm sorry. You don't understand. Please come. It's my daughter. Please. All right. <laughs> How is she? She'll be all right. And the baby? The baby's dead. Where's the father? He, he, he's not well. He, he can't be seen. Then you'd better come in there. I gave her a sedative. She'll sleep for six or seven hours. Come over here. Did you get around to everybody about the meeting tonight? Yes, I've asked, but I don't think they'll come. Didn't you explain to them? No. I thought I'd leave that to you. What are they all afraid of, for God's sakes? Well, some of them feel it's a result of inbreeding. And the rest, they feel it's some kind of judgment. Give me that old-time religion. Well, whatever it is, they're ashamed of it. Yes, that's right enough. This disease they've got. Can you cure them? Can you? To be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know because it may be different from the ordinary acromegaly that we find in clinics. I'm sure we can arrest it. I'm sure of it. <laughs> 
But what about the others? Can't you reverse the effect it's already had? Well, I don't know. How about are they? Well, they've seen as much as I have. You mean they just took their beds and haven't been seen since? Well, they kept to their houses or their families kept them there. For all I know, they may be dead. Two of them are, anyway. Two? Old Mr. Murray and the disappearing body in the woods. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Right, sir. Ah, Dr. Quist. Good morning. Good morning, Admiral. Left your young apprentice at home today, I see. <laughs> oh, I'm allowed out on my own from time to time. <laughs> uh, sit down. Now then, what can I do for you? Uh, quite a lot, I hope. We found out who's been trespassing on your dump at Castle Rock. Oh, good. Who? Some tin pot disposal firm. Keston Disposals, they call themselves, from near Wimbra. And? We now have to get the stuff they dumped uh, up again. We? I don't have anyone else with the appropriate ships and equipment. Yes, well, I'm not at all convinced that the Navy should clean up a civilian's mess. Well, surely, in essence, that's what the Navy always has to do. In matters of defense, of course. But I don't think that this is the same thing at all. On the contrary, the fence of the realm would cover it all too well. Hey, you get too many all of that same. Right! Right in the back. Come on. Right in the back. Come on, come on. Down here. Come on. Can you see anything? Nothing like the ones we want. Let's find out who's in charge here. Charge here! Who wants to know? Dr. Shaw wants to know! Oh. I wonder who he is. I think he's the public relations officer. <laughs> Look at him. He's expecting you. Well, I hope so. Mr. Brewer is up there. Doran, say to expect you. How do you do? How do you do? Now, what can I do for you? Yes, I wonder if you've got any of their PGH left. Any left? Oh, I've got an old boat roll. Come on, follow me. Can I take one of these? Well, sure. Mr. Broom said I was to offer you every facility. I've got another 200 in the hold. You can save me the trouble of dumping if you like. One'll do, thanks. And you're not dumping these. What do you mean? You're in enough trouble already. Trouble? <laughs> I'm in no trouble. You bloody well are. For dumping this stuff in a prohibited area. You can't prove it. I've got photographs of the dump, man. Anyway, why not? Where's the harm in it? If the Navy can use the place for a dump, why can't I? Do you know what's down there? They scuttled a the ship there, I'd heard. You heard wrong. It was radioactive waste. So if you go ahead and dump this lot, you'll be out of business so quick your feet won't touch the ground. Now, wait a minute. There's no ship down there. It's radioactive waste. The radiation has produced gas in your canisters, and now they're bursting open like shelling peas. Come on, Victoria, get out.
Mr. Murray. I'm going in for a drink and I'm going to try and drum up some support for this meeting. Well, good luck. Are you coming in with me? No, I think I'll get the schoolroom ready for the meeting. Hello, Dell. Hello, any news? We're all organized now. We can have a medical team on Belf right away. Look, can you hold it just until tonight? I said we're ready. I know, I know, I know. I've called a meeting of the whole village. What for? Well, I want to explain everything to them, just give them a chance to take it in. It'll make very little difference, a matter of hours. I'll phone you immediately after the meeting, OK? All right, then. But that's the latest. I'll wait for your call. Good luck. Thanks. Come no closer. Why not? I'm. I'm going ugly. What do you want? I don't know. I. I want to talk to you. I'm the one who's been following you since you come. Because you want to talk to me? No, I was told to. To see what you were doing. Well. What do you want to talk to me about? I, I don't know. I just don't want to go like my grandfather. What uh, happened to him then? He went ugly too. Worse than me. But he went bad in the head too. And I don't want that. I shouldn't really tell you this, but it don't matter now because he's dead. He killed my little sister. He went so bad. He had terrible rages, like a mad animal. That's why we had to hide him out in the barn. Oh, that was him, was it? Oh, until you found him, so we had to bring him back. But he died anyway. You see, he jumped out the window. Your name's Murray, isn't it? That's right. Brian Murray. That was his name, too. He handed me his name and this. Will you trust me, Brian? I don't know. I must do, mustn't I? Or want to, at least. Will you come to the meeting at the schoolhouse with me? What for? Well, I want to talk to the people about what's wrong with them. If I had you with me, it might help me. And them too, you know? Sorry, there aren't more of you. Now, you all know Brian Murray. You don't really know me. My name is Del Shaw, and I'm a doctor. Now, when you look at Brian, 
You all, I'm sure, see certain characteristics that have become familiar to you. The overhanging brows, the broadening of the nose and lips. I haven't looked at Brian's teeth, but I'd be willing to bet that the lower teeth are separating because of the abnormal growth of the jawbone. Can I look, Brian? Yes, you see. And you notice the hands, the thick, spatulate fingers. Now, I want to make this quite clear. This is not due to inbreeding. This is not an inherited condition passed on through families. This is not even, as I've heard it suggested, a divine judgment. This disease has been well known to doctors for a long time. It is called acromegaly. And it is usually caused by too much of a certain hormone being produced by a gland at the base of the brain called the pituitary gland. In this case, however, it has been caused by the hormone getting in from the outside. It, now, probably, we think probably in the fish that you eat. <laughs> now, I know that you've been ashamed of this disease because you didn't know what it was. You've concealed it, and you've also concealed crimes committed by the victims of the disease. Now, the violence behind them was triggered off by the same material. And now is the time to come out in the open. There is nothing whatever shameful in this disease, and it can be cured. I'm going to telephone the mainland for medical help, and I want you to persuade all the people you think are suffering from this disease to come forward for examination and treatment. You say it can be cured? Yes. How? Well, one way is to treat the pituitary gland with x-rays. Will they do that here? On the island, you mean? Oh, no, it'll probably have to be done on the mainland. Please, please, just listen a moment. It's the only way. I promise you, this is the only way. There isn't any other. And how long is it going to take? Well, I don't know. Well, a week? No. A month? No, it's a long job. That's all very well. But how long, then? A year? Yes, it could be. It depends how far the disease is developed. Do you realize how many of us are, have got this disease? No, I don't know. More than half the island. Yeah. But more like three quarters. There won't be any village left. <laughs> You're an outsider and you're trying to tell us what to do. You'll kill the whole island. That's what you'll do. Listen, please, listen. Del, Del, it's no good. I better phone Chris now. What do you want? Could we use the phone, Mrs. Jacob? It's very late. Please. Mrs. Straker, it's very urgent. Turn up 
the lamp. Thank you. Operator. Hello, I want to make a call to London, please. Yes, it's a personal call to Dr. Quist. Come on, come on, come on. I'm trying to connect you, sir. Dell. What? The back door. Get out the front one, quick. Telephone. Put it down. Put it down. Hold the line, please. I'm trying to connect to you. You are not going to destroy this island, Dr. Shaw. Our families have lived here for hundreds of years. Perhaps that's not a good thing. But it was our life. Without this island, we would have no life. We'd all be scattered. We don't want to harm you, but we will if we have to defend our island. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, but your community is already damaged. It's perhaps beyond repair. I don't want to destroy it. I want to try and save it. You yourselves are damaged too, and I want to try and help you. There's no reasonable alternative. If you're not treated, you'll all get worse. You'll all go blind. You'll all die before your time. Your island community will certainly die. The medical help I can bring is your only hope. I'm going to telephone the mainland now to get help. We'll kill if we have to. Make no mistake about that. Operator. Hello. Hello. Uh, number. Hello. I want to make a call to London, please. London. Just hold the line a moment, sir. <laughs> Hello. Get me Doom Watch in London, please. Will our children down for the right first, please? Let them stretch it through.
Are they all going? Yes. Every family has at least one affected. Some of them have got two. This island will be in ruins in two years. <laughs>